here we are, just waiting to be early for our bus. But if we leave now, we'll be really early, so we're trying to at least wait until we're only kind of early. There are our hand luggage only bags already. That looks massive. Um, it's really not, but it does look quite significant. It did stretch a bit more than I was thinking it would, so that was a pleasant surprise. And we have things shoved in our pockets of our coats. And this is all we're bringing with us for, I think, 16 days. They'll never catch on. <laughs> it's just a large burrito that you bought here in the airport. <laughs> Perfectly legal. I would love if you learned to drive a real car just to play this better. <laughs> We are <laughs> in Poland and also in McDonald's. I would just like to say that even though I swore there was nothing sadder than going to a European city full of new and exciting restaurants and ending up in McDonald's, I have decided that McDonald's hate ends here. McDonald's is always open, always cheap, and always there for you. Slap me up an order of that pink slime, my faithful friend. After McDonald's, we walked around the town square a bit, then on our way back to the hostel saw a mysterious greyhound wearing a flashing light-up collar and trotting through the city streets completely alone and with great confidence and purpose. We tried to follow him, but to no avail. It was late by the time we got back to the hostel and people in our room were already sleeping. We discovered at that late hour and in that utter darkness that this was a hostel where one had to make one's own bed. They of course provided bedding, but I discovered that I had been gifted a naked duvet, two top sheets, a pillowcase, and apparently no pillow. As I sat atop my top bunk perch, staring into the void and wondering if it was worth it to go downstairs and beg a pillow from reception, the guy in the bed next to me sits up, apologizes, and hands me my pillow, which he had propped up under his own without putting the case on. Call me feral for not getting a new one anyway, but when it's midnight and you're paying six euros a night, you become a woman with wildly different priorities. Beautiful. What is this? Is that tofu? Tofu scramble. Amazing. Uh, vegetables. Exciting. And four sausage. Yeah. And what the salmon? On day two, after eating fancy breakfast and feeling the European fantasy, we explored the town some more, including this treasure-themed candy store and a Christmas ornament shop where we went buck wild because everything was so affordable, and then for the remaining 13 days of our holiday, we had to carry around a collection of fragile glass ornaments. Yes, so many arms. Oh, I love it. Later, we witnessed the trumpeter of Krakow. He trumpets from each direction of the tower, then waves to us commoners. The legend goes that he leaves off the last note because a trumpeter of yore was shot by an arrow before he could finish the song. Then, as one must do in every European city, we went inside the cathedral. It was the first Eastern European cathedral I've been in, and can I just say, the vibes, the maximalism, the opulence. Found this inscrutable depiction of JC and the boys in a shop. If anyone knows which one the upside down redhead is supposed to be, let me know. He is their king. Once again, it was time to eat, this time a cheeky Thai curry and some veggie dumplings, which tasted a bit like grass. But as a child, I used to sample all the various types of animal feed when I visited my friend's farm, so that doesn't put me off. The drinks featured are white and red mulled wines. We did do a few things in between meals. We went to a bookshop and hung out at the hostel, but I'm not kidding when I say we ate constantly. Dinner was followed by coffee at a bohemian spot, then we went to see the new Kingsman movie. 
The movie was a hot mess, but a very fun hot mess. But also, don't take an Irish woman to see a film about secret service men whose entire mission in life is to uphold and venerate the British Empire. Sit down. Wow, where's that? Food of the day. On this day, we split up, Erica to wander the city and eat more because she is a vegan who doesn't take her vitamins and so is always starving, and me to tour a salt mine. Here I am descending into the Earth's bowels. The mine featured many beautiful salt sculptures, a few special effects with light and sound, including a pitch black cavern that was suddenly illuminated to reveal the silhouette of a wizard, accompanied by a dramatic score, and of course, lots of interesting salt facts provided by our tour guide. I purchased a bottle of garlic salt as my souvenir, and if you know me and you're thinking, did this salt-obsessed woman place herself in the back of the group, wait until no one was looking, and then quickly and discreetly lick the wall of the cavern? And the answer is an enthusiastic yes. All my foods. But she said, cheese lard. and lard. <laughs> Get y'all your lard. There were gingerbread ornaments hanging from the window, and I asked our waitress if anyone had ever taken a bite out of one, but I think she thought I was asking if I could take a bite out of one, and she strongly discouraged me from doing so, and no doubt went home and told her family all about the stupid American she had met at work that day. We then visited this cool history o Krakow museum under, yes folks, under the town square, where we had a fun time with holograms and found out we are roughly the height of an average medieval man. Y'all, I could never time travel. A giant left-handed woman who can read, I'd be burnt for a witch on day one. It's snowing. <laughs> and our hair is wet. <laughs> This breakfast was disappointingly bland, but nourishing, and afterwards we walked along the river toward Oscar Schindler's, as in Schindler's List's, enamel factory, and upon stopping to feed some birds with bread smuggled out of various restaurants, we encountered a mystical bird woman. After a snowy walk back to the city center, we dined at a vegan cafe hidden deep within a courtyard within a courtyard. Check the fit. What is that? <laughs> we forgot. Um, Polish style. Things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oyster mushrooms. Document the journey out. <laughs> Just wipe out on the snow. You have to be impressed that they've managed to make a living. There you go. <laughs> We deserted at this charming tea room named after me. Yes, me, who else is there? Every day around 6 p.m. we would find ourselves exhausted, stuffed to the gills, and with no idea what to do with our lives because we are homeschoolers to whom nightlife is a foreign concept. So we went off once again to the cinema, this time to see The Matrix, which is also a hot mess, but a fun hot mess, which is perhaps the ideal type of film. <laughs> we checked out of our hostel, locked our luggage in the luggage room with the help of this giant rat, and headed for a charming mountain town to spend the day before catching an overnight bus to Budapest. We stopped at this inviting, nay, irresistible bakery for some breakfast treats, then bussed and taxied our way to the cable car departure point so we could journey up the mountain. Around this time, my phone, which had been snowed on pretty heavily as I navigated to the bus station, began to act up, and the camera lens fogged up from the inside, so the rest of my videos from that day are somewhat haunting. The cable waypoint is accessible video. To make sure that everyone can see the mountain attractions and... Okay. <laughs> 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 
What a view! <laughs> so beautiful! Oblivion. Ah, there it is! Wow, Slovakia is beautiful this time of year. Ooh, a mountain. Ooh. Came up all the way, all the way up the mountain for this. We lasted all of five minutes in the mountaintop blizzard and descended with the next cable car back to the little town, which had a very Gatlinburg vibe. This town is famous for making ornately carved sheep cheeses, which they sell out of little wagons. In other news, we went to the grocery store for rice to dry my phone and snacks, and later, as we traversed the snowy streets, Erica absolutely wiped out, and later said that her only thought as she went down was that she mustn't let go of her crisps. As I laughed at her, a kind Polish woman stopped to make sure that she was okay, and Erica just sat there in the snow, confused as to how she'd arrived there and sure of only one thing, the crisps were safe. <laughs> Finally, a good view of some fireworks. <laughs> it looks so sad. Watcher, do not loudly declare in the hearing of the restaurant staff as you stare at your food the words, it looks so sad. You may be talking about the quality of the image on your water-damaged camera, but they have no way of knowing that, and you have now perhaps forever damaged the self-esteem of an innocent Polish chef.